Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with you once again. This particular video is going to be quite a departure from the kind of videos that I usually do in more ways than one. I will explain the departures as we go along, but the first and most notable departure is the type of video that this is. You see, I am not a big fan of unboxing videos, and I have never done a video product review that I can ever remember, though as I get closer to 800 videos produced and uploaded to YouTube, at least that are public, well, sometimes I have to admit that I lose track of everything that I've created. I've noticed that more and more lately, as people have asked me to tell them about older videos, I find myself not remembering them as well. So today's video is going to be an unboxing and a product review all in one. I hope you're ready for that much excitement in one video. I'm not sure I am, but I think if I pace myself, I can probably get through it. What you're looking at is the iSound Pop Drop brand Bluetooth loudspeaker. This is actually a Bluetooth speaker and speakerphone. That brings me to the second major diversion from my usual type of videos. I am not the person, I am not the kind of person who would ordinarily buy a Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth speaker phone. I don't own a cell phone because I despise the things and most people seem to use these with a cell phone and given that all of my Bluetooth capable computers have speakers available well I've never really seen the need to own a Bluetooth speaker but as it happens the Radio Shack stores around here all of which so far have reopened under the uh, combination Sprint and Radio Shack rebranding well, they had these things on sale. They had a table full of discounts in the store, which was still looking pretty bare, though the people at Radio Shack tell me that they are, in fact, going to be restocking the store, seemingly not just with Sprint cell phones, but also, if you can believe this, and i got to admit I'm kind of skeptical, with a much wider selection of electronic components and stuff that would appeal to the various hobbyists. I'll believe it when I see it happen, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I hope that somebody can reinvent Radio Shack from the ashes of what it was, and I'm, I'm amazed that Sprint, or Standard General Partners, which I believe is just a shell company for Sprint, would actually be willing to do that. But I digress. They had these speakers on severe discount at the front of the store. I think they're ordinarily like a $16 to $20 item, and they had these marked down to $8 a piece. They were available in multiple colors. This particular variation of the Pop Drop iSound Bluetooth loudspeaker and speakerphone system is the so-called licorice color. I remember they had red and blue ones as well. Believe it or not, this is a stereo speaker inside this cabinet. All these holes do not go through the plastic, but of the ones that do, you can pretty clearly make out the outline of two individual speakers in there. So let's go ahead and start with the unboxing here. It looks like this package is sealed by some nearly invisible kind of tape or something here. I don't know if I can pick this off with a fingernail, but if not, I am going to continue in my proud tradition here on the UXW Bill channel and in real life of misusing random kitchen utensils should I fail to get this open. Now the package art on the front would seem to imply at least that there is a lanyard inside this package that you could use this speaker as some kind of a pendant or something similar. Let's see if that lets us get it open. I don't think I'm quite there yet. <laughs> this is as it happens video, folks. It also implies some of the product reviews that I read on Amazon, which admittedly might have been priming myself to say something either good or bad about this speaker, although I'm going to try to be as honest as possible. Some of the Amazon.com reviews seem to suggest that this thing also had a hand strap. Now, I was going to try to be a good boy here on this video and, and not lose patience and, and rip this thing open in a violent or vitriolic manner on camera, but I am... Apparently my luck was not going to hold with regard to getting this thing open. So here we go. I'm resorting to the kitchen utensils already. I'm just going to kind of try to score that open. That certainly seems to have brought it up. Fortunately, there's one of these on the other side, but maybe now there's one on the bottom too. Are well, those weasels? <laughs> now we'll just see if I can push that one open as well. Ouch! This is a good way to cut the devil out of yourself. But there you can see, I'll make sure I've actually got it on the viewfinder that I'm not getting it out of the picture here. There you can see the uh, package has been opened. 
and the paper the paper surround containing the loudspeaker actually comes out as one unit wouldn't be surprised if there was yet more tape holding this together nope just some sticky glue and this is what we get they get the little pop drop speaker itself this looks like less of a lanyard and more of a wrist strap but you could probably attach a lanyard to it if you wanted to information on the back FCC certified has a BC mark in a circle I don't recognize that one CE mark for our neighbors um, our neighbors across the pond of the European region and then also for the European region is the waste equipment and electronics directive which is basically a trash can with an X symbol over it indicating that you're not supposed to put this in the trash when it when its useful lifetime has been concluded we have four rubber feet here that uh, really can't serve much purpose I mean it's not possible for this thing to sit flat so I'm guessing that these probably conceal screws which would suggest that maybe just maybe this unit is serviceable in the event that the built-in battery should poop out on you and need to be replaced there are four buttons on the back here we have a power button a play pause button track backwards track forwards which may also be volume control buttons I'm not really sure and it looks like the play pause button may in fact be a Bluetooth pairing button as well rather surprisingly I see that this has an auxiliary input on it so even if you don't have a Bluetooth aware device to which with which you could use to uh, relay audio to this speaker well it looks like you could plug in something using a 1 8 inch or oh I forget how many millimeters it is stereo mini plug into this mini jack connector and here is our USB charging connector and that's pretty much all there is to say about this particular thing here's our little USB cable I don't know if the battery inside this thing will have any appreciable amount of charge or not I don't see any instructions I guess they think I'm smart enough to do this all by myself which is pretty debatable folks <laughs> we'll see if I can at least get it to turn itself on I don't know that I can do that oh there we go it even makes a cute little noise and I would imagine it's trying to pair itself with something which brings me to the second part of this video and that's the actual review let's go ahead and try this thing out see how it works now I realized prior to making this video that I would have to go and get something that was Bluetooth enabled because down here in the uh, computing basement of doom if you can believe it I don't actually have anything readily handy amongst all this junk that is Bluetooth capable now the most obvious example that came to mind was this Lenovo IdeaPad Mix 10 tablet and that would be the easy way to do things oh sure I could go ahead and pair this speaker with that tablet in fact it would probably make a pretty good companion to this tablet because I have to tell you this tablets kind of a piece I would never recommend that you buy this particular product from Lenovo and I say that with some sadness in my mind because Lenovo has typically done a pretty good job with their computer products but this tablet is just terrible in so many different ways the least of its worries are being equipped with Windows 8 8.1 it's actually the driver software and to a lesser extent the digitizer the fact that this thing runs its battery down in about three days when it's in standby mode the, the list just goes on and on and on it is considerably less infuriating than the Dell Venue 8 Pro that I had a while ago but it's it's just a piece of crap I would never suggest that you buy this product and of course I have never been about doing things the easy way so instead of using this which might work right off the bat and as I started to say could certainly benefit from this speaker because the built-in speakers on this Lenovo IdeaPad Mix 10 I think it is um, its amplifier its audio amplifier not only has an oscillation problem it also seems to have a DC offset problem and it has managed to essentially kill both of the internal stereo speakers so that's that's just no good at all like I said I'm never about doing things the easy way so I have brought down the world famous Dell Latitude D800 which is probably going to complain vehemently about having a uh, 65 watt AC adapter attached to it that is if it hasn't managed to lose its CMOS settings from sitting inactive for so long I can't believe it it sounds like there's a CD in this thing I wonder what it could be well, I've been looking for this for a while <laughs> was wondering where uh, disc one of that set had gotten it wasn't in my disc changer 
I think that was actually a remnant of a video that I never published demonstrating uh, the installation of a new keyboard into this machine. I have loved this Latitude D800. It's been, by and large, a great computer in all, for all the years that I've had it. It's hard to believe that that's been over 10 years now. I bought it brand new from Dell in March of 2005. And the only problem it ever had was with keyboards. It just loved to eat keyboards for some reason. Well, somewhere around here, I have a box of no less than 15 keyboards. <laughs> yes, there we go. A 65 watt AC power adapter has been detected. I don't know if we can get the camera to show you that. There we go. Preventing optimal system performance. Well, we don't really care too much about that. That basically means it's going to charge the battery much more slowly than it usually would. But like, I, like I was saying, this computer has been excellent outside of the fact that it has just gone through keyboards like crazy. Dell replaced the keyboard no less than three or four times under warranty, and I think the warranty on this machine ran only to maybe four years by the time everything was said and done. So let's go ahead and see if it actually boots up. It's running the best release of Windows ever, in my opinion. This is the direction that Microsoft should take Windows back towards, again, in my not-so-humble opinion. I'll go ahead and get logged into the system here, and then we'll see if this thing's 11-year-old Bluetooth stack can bring itself to talk to this little Bluetooth speaker friend. We'll see if it acts very friendly towards it or not. All right, I'm back after that exciting little detour, and you can see I've landed at the Windows 2000 professional desktop. We'll go ahead and get the taskbar up here. I do want to take a moment just to voice a potentially obnoxious opinion by saying that for all the claims that Microsoft has made over the years with newer products about how clean and spare their UI design is, presumably implying a much more productive use of available screen real estate, well, all I can say to that is complete and utter bulldust on their part. Nothing really beats the spare user interface that was present in Microsoft Windows 2000 and prior. All right, I'll go ahead and get off of my soapbox now. Make sure that the uh, Bluetooth stack on this machine is actually turned on. It's got a little blue LED down here. Well, you can't see it because it's completely out of the range of the camera's viewfinder, but along with the power hard drive and battery charging status LED on models equipped from the factory with Bluetooth, there's also a blue LED which means this machine is compliant with all the latest crazes in consumer electronics design, except, of course, that which concerns having a white LED somewhere on the product. But it counters that by having an orange one in the case of a battery charging fault. Anyway, once again, I digress. The blue LED has by and large burned out at this point, which I guess suggests that when you're the star of the show, life really is a good bit harder on you. So let's go ahead and see if I can actually get this thing to be set up here. I know the service I want to use and I want to find a Bluetooth device that provides that service. I want to find a specific Bluetooth device and configure how this computer will use its services and I want to configure Bluetooth services that this computer will provide to remote devices and then finally I want to change the name and or device type that this computer displays to other Bluetooth devices. I have to admit, I have not used Bluetooth a whole heck of a lot in my lifetime, so I'm probably going to do something embarrassing and incorrect during this particular part of the video, and maybe I'll even be honest and I won't edit it out so that you can all point and laugh and say, Ha ha! <laughs> Told you so! Anyway, let's go ahead and click on Next here and just see what happens. I really don't know too much about uh, Bluetooth audio devices, having never used any, or the Bluetooth A2DP protocol, as I believe it's called. And I think this machine, I think this machine is only, uh, only Bluetooth 1.0 capable instead of the enhanced data rate 2.0, as best I remember it. But look at this, folks. Look at that. It has found a pop drop device. It has also found the Logitech K480 keyboard that's paired with the, uh, the Lenovo IdeaPad tablet. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Pair the same keyboard to uh, two different devices. It calls it an audio headset, so we'll go ahead and see what happens here. To pair with a remote device, the remote device must be in pairable mode, and you must know the PIN code. Well, how do we get a PIN out of this thing?
It hasn't spoken. <laughs> I can skip pairing, but I somehow expect it won't work. I suppose it's meant to speak or beep or something. Go ahead and turn it off here. I'm really not sure. Okay, we'll go back. I guess we'll skip the pairing process. Obviously, somebody never really thought about the actual usability of this software. I don't think we need a secure connection, but I'm not going to play with that because it seems like it might just be tempting fate, you know? So let's go ahead and see what we've got there. Do we have, do we have a Bluetooth communication taking place? I don't know. I'm not even terribly sure where this would show up. But I guess we'll go and look in sounds and multimedia and see what kind of devices we have. All right, we have SigmaTel audio and Bluetooth audio for playback and recording. So we'll go ahead and set those to Bluetooth audio and then we'll go into good old, well, it's down here on the quick launch bar. That'd be the fastest way to get at it. Go in here to good old iGoons and hopefully I haven't left any profanity laced playlists in the list. <laughs> Believe it or not, as you can probably tell if you could read this folder over here that says desktop crap, sometimes when things aren't going well on the computer or I'm just feeling ornery because I have a very ornery sense of humor, well, sometimes I will actually go ahead and <laughs> name things in a naughty manner. And it looks like I don't have anything on there other than a couple of mixtapes and CDs that I've burned. So let's see, what did I put on one of my mixtapes? Oh, we got a lot of... Uh, a lot of Al we have Alabama on this, but there's a lot of different artists here. So let's just see if we can play something. I don't hear anything. Let's see if it's coming out of the computer's primary speakers. And then we'll see if I maybe need to turn the volume up on this little fella. Yeah, I'll stick it right up next to my ear while it's supposed to be playing. That's bound to be a recipe for success. Well, it seems to have maybe sort of, kind of, somehow paired with the computer, but it's not actually playing any sound. So I guess I'm going to see if I can download some kind of instructions, or maybe I'll have to give up and use the tablet because it's got a much newer Bluetooth stack on it, and it might actually work. So back in a few... Well, alrighty then. No matter how much of a proponent or a practitioner of doing things the hard way I might happen to be, I am not at all in favor of doing things the impossible way. And unfortunately, it seems to be absolutely impossible to get this little pop drop fella to communicate in any way, shape, or form with the Bluetooth stack on my good old Dell Latitude D800. I would imagine that it probably would work if the Bluetooth software stack were to be updated, but as far as I know, I have the latest version that Dell ever released, and I don't know of any good way to go about getting a later version for that particular machine, nor do I think I can be sufficiently bothered to even try to investigate. So that looked like a complete non-starter, so I brought out the tablet once again, and we'll see if I actually remember how to go about adding a Bluetooth device to a Windows 8 system? This is a very good question. I think it's under PC settings. We'll, we'll see here. Oh, PC and devices, Bluetooth. I'm surprised I actually remembered how to do that. All right. This system also considers it a headset. I went ahead and hit the pair button. I think the main problem with the Latitude D800 is that it's poor old ancient Bluetooth stack. 
cannot accept the fact that a headset would not need a pin of any kind in order to continue. And even entering stupid pins like all zeros or all ones wasn't enough to convince it to work. I was clearly thinking about doing something here. I don't know if it's installing software, but that would be my guess. Rather than having all of you sit through the positively glacial experience of this thing installing or running pretty much anything, um, I might go ahead and pause the video. I would have until it made that noise, which suggests that it might actually be willing to entertain thoughts of doing this. So I guess we'll go back. I really don't care for the modern user interface. And look at that. <laughs> the old style user interface comes shining through. So what, what can we do here? I don't really have a lot of music on this machine, and I don't think I have a copy of iTunes on it. No, I definitely don't. So what, what could I possibly play that might allow us to demonstrate? Pretty sure this is not how you use a tablet. <laughs> just go into the uh, into the Windows Media folder and come on. See if we can find something interesting in there. Ah, good old one-stop MIDI. How do I want to play this? Well, we'll play it in Windows Media Player. Which, of course, I've never set up, so now it's got to ask about that. And there it is, playing through the little pop drop speaker. The sound quality is really not bad. Let's see if I can play and pause it. Well, that doesn't seem to work. How about the volume? Okay, the volume control seems to work. Maybe this window has to have focus for play and pause events to be taken in. Nope, doesn't look like it. But the sound quality is not too bad. And as soon as I got it to a Bluetooth stack that could tolerate it, it seemed to pair pretty much as advertised. I do have to publish a bit of a correction, or at least an amendment, to my original commentary about the instructions. Although not by much, because the official user's manual, uh, the official website for the iSound Pop Drop product, does not have anything in the way of instructions. Their support section only goes so far as to a frequently asked questions section. But in the bottom of the packaging here, sure enough, there it was. The user's guide for the Pop Drop wireless speaker. So, my review of this thing is unfortunately rather brief. Maybe not as informative as you, as you would have hoped for sitting through what is undoubtedly a much longer than 10 minute video. But I would say that at least in the interim, in the beginning and on the surface, it would appear that this thing could, in fact, get my uh, UXW bill seal of approval. The sound quality seems to be pretty good. It seems to have pretty decent volume. I guess the only test I can think of to run at this point is that of distance. Should be interesting to see how far away I can take the tablet before this thing starts to mess up. Now, I don't really want to take the camcorder through my computer mess room because I'm sure I will hear about that from every dunce on YouTube that needs a permanent timeout from the internet. But what I can do is walk through the computer mess room and go gradually backwards through the basement while leaving this thing in sight of the camcorder and still playing. So I'm going to go ahead and try doing that. The furthest I will get away is probably about 50 feet. So we'll just we'll try to set things up here for a, a good demonstration. Provided, of course, that it would kindly stop falling off the computer. <laughs> Which it probably won't. It'll probably fall off the moment I walk away. I'll turn the candy ham light on so you can see things a little bit better. Zoom in on the subject and I'll start the mini file playing once again. We'll see just how far away I can get before the Bluetooth link uh, happens to peter out and fail. They 
say it's good for up to 35 feet. I'm at the doorway, probably about six feet away. Oh, I hear it stammering. Okay, I'd say I made it about 10 feet away. Go ahead and turn that off so you might actually have a chance of hearing me. And in case you could not hear me, I made it about 10 feet away from the back room to just entering the computer mess room. And of course, this thing did fall down again. What a little ingrate it is. <laughs> so, to answer the question, is this thing worthwhile? Well, yeah, I think it is if your Bluetooth equipped device happens to work with it or its software stack can be updated such that it will work with it. I think this could be an entirely decent piece of equipment. And at $7, possibly even at your local Radio Shack, I think it's entirely worth buying. Even if it wasn't worth buying, it's only $7. Thank you for watching. Do feel free to leave a comment if you have one.